now I would like to welcome Markus Tünte. Here you are. Uh, you will be talking about the rhythms within investigating perception of heartbeat and respiration in infants. Um, yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present um, some of my research today. Uh, my name is Markus Tünte. I'm a PhD student at the University of Vienna uh, in the lab of Stephanie Hull. Um, and yeah, today I want to talk about um, perception of heartbeat and respiration in infants. Um, so I, I want to start um, by um, briefly um, reiterating what we have already been talking about a lot, which is um, um, yeah, how do we understand consciousness, self, and agency? Um, however, um, I want to uh, make the point that we need to consider this in a developmental setting. Um, so how does consciousness arise? Uh, when do we start to have a sense of self? Um, and how does agency develop? And um, in my PhD research, I'm trying to um, yeah, contribute a little bit to this um, by considering how infants perceive the world. Um, so um, when we talk about um, infants' perception of the world, um, there are basically three ways in which we can perceive the world that have already been introduced quite nicely, um, I think. Um, um, the first one being exteroception, so the perception of the world around us um, through um, hearing or through vision. Um, the second being proprioception, which is the perception of um, yeah, our body parts um, in our environment. Um, and the third one being interoception, um, which is the perception of our own bodily signals. Um, and when we consider the case of infants, what is quite interesting is that we know a lot about um, exoception and proprioception, um, but we have quite limited knowledge about interoception in infants. So how does it develop? Um, and uh, yeah, um, with what is it related to? Um, so uh, Manos Sakiris has already made um, quite nice um, the case for interoception, um, that it's important for our emotional perception for mental health, for homeostasis, so for a lot of things um, that shape uh, our behavior and our experiences. Um, and um, so to understand how and when infants develop a sense of self, um, we probably need to understand um, how they develop um, interoception or interoceptive abilities. Um, however, how do we measure that in infants? Um, this is actually uh, not as easy as one might think, um, because in adults, a lot is done through self-reports. So um, you ask people, okay, do you perceive your heartbeat right now? Um, which for me, for example, might be quite easy to answer. I'm giving a presentation, I'm maybe a bit stressed. Um, while maybe if you're sitting all day, um, that's not so easy right now. Um, however, with infants, we cannot do this. We cannot ask them, right? So we have to rely on um, implicit measures to um, find out how infants perceive, um, or if infants perceive their own bodily signals. Um, and one, one measure that I want to talk about today is so-called preferential looking paradigms. Um, and in these paradigms, we use eye tracking um, to present stimuli on a screen and um, that can be of different kinds and to see whether infants find them interesting, um, yeah, put their attention to these images or not. Um, and I want to present um, two tasks today um, in which we have done um, such a preferential looking paradigm investigating um, heartbeat and respiration perception in infants. Um, the first task is the iBeats task, um, and the main idea in this task is that we um, couple the presentation of the images on the screen to the infant's heartbeat. Um, so that in synchronous condition, this is always coupled with the heartbeat, and in asynchronous condition, we generate an artificial signal that is similar to the heartbeat, but it's not the heartbeat. Um, and um, importantly, we do a gaze contingent presentation. So um, the image will stay on the screen as long as the infant is directing attention to the screen, but as soon as the infant um, looks away, the next trial starts. So we can get an idea about how much um, are they interested in that. Um, and in terms of results, I want to talk about one index that we look, is, look at, which is so-called absolute proportional scores. So they give us an idea of how strong of a preference for either um, condition do the infants have, but do not differentiate in which condition does it go. Um, and we did this paradigm with three, nine, and 18-month-old infants. Um, and um, what we find is that across all age ranges, so on the left you see um, the three-month-olds, um, then the nine-month-olds, and the 18-month-olds, um, there seems to be quite a similar um, yeah, pattern in, in heartbeat perception in infants. 
Um, so one might say even at three month olds, infants already show um, some kind of cardiac perception. Um, but um, we, there's a world beyond the heartbeat. Um, so there are also other interoceptive modalities um, that might be interesting to look at. Um, so next we wanted to say, okay, can we use this, this idea um, to uh, investigate uh, infants' respiratory perception? Um, so we created the iBreath task um, following the same logic. So the presentation is always coupled with the respiration of the infant um, using a respiratory belt. Um, and it can either be synchronous or asynchronous. And um, again, um, we use a gaze contingent presentation. Um, and here, what we find is actually a bit different compared to what we find with the heartbeat. So um, at three and nine months, um, scores are lower, and then towards 18 months, they increase. Um, so there might be some development going on between nine and 18 months um, in terms of respiratory perception, um, which might also make sense if we think that um, in this age range, maybe motor development is a very important, so they move more, and um, that might be coupled to respiration. Um, yeah, so taken together, we find that um, infants, uh, probably already at three months old, can perceive their heartbeat and their respiration. However, respiration might develop um, while um, heartbeat perception might stay right, rather constant. Um, so next we wanted to see, okay, are these two modalities related to each other? So is um, cardiac perception related to um, heartbeat perception in infants? Um, and what we find here is that we do not find a strong evidence for a relationship between cardiac and respiratory perception in infants. Um, there might be something at 18 months, um, but um, yeah, in, in general, it does not seem to be very strong, um, which is maybe a bit surprising in the first moment, but if you look at research in adults and um, in children, you actually see that um, there also is not a strong relationship between cardiac and respiratory perception. Um, yeah, so to sum up, um, infants probably perceive their own heartbeat, um, perceive their own respiration, um, but these modalities are not related to each other. Um, and with that, I want to um, give a short outlook in the end, um, which is um, that the development of interoception is probably crucially related to the interactions with the primary caregiver. So, so far I've talked about um, interoception from the infant's perspective. However, the infant um, is not uh, alone in the world but the infant is in constant interaction with the primary caregiver. And um, the way in which interoception probably develops is through these em embodied interactions um, in which um, the primary caregiver needs to identify the infant's um, interoceptive needs and react accordingly to them, right? Um, and so um, the paradigms that I've presented might allow us to investigate um, these very important early interactions that might be very very um, yeah, important for social development um, and also for a minimal self. Um, yeah, with that, I want to thank you all for your attention. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the questions later. Thank you.